Okay, perfect. All right. So as Jay says, uh, we're going to be talking about healthy eating strategies for, for you busy professionals. So um, I always like to start presentations off with an itinerary just to kind of give you an idea of where we're going from here. So um, first thing we're going to do is talk about healthy eating, because how can we talk about healthy eating for busy professionals without talking about healthy eating? Um, I should say that uh, healthy eating, you know, I put it in quotes because it's, it's quite a broad you know, nutrition is very broad and, and healthy eating is, um, you know, there's certainly recommendations for, you know, kind of general healthy eating in the general population. And then there's also, um, you know, recommendations for individuals. And um, I guess with that, I should, I should kind of provide some kind of disclosure saying like this, you know, the information that I'm providing is based on um, you know, obviously my expertise, but also, you know, uh, geared towards kind of a general healthy eating and not necessarily um, cater to any one individual. So um, if you feel like you need that attention, I, I always recommend, you know, going to talk to a, a physician or registered dietitian if you feel like you need to, you know, address some of these things with respect to certain um, health issues or, uh, you know, anything, anything like that. Um, healthy eating from there, I'm going to go into kind of some big picture ideas in terms of the, uh, you know, the busy professionals piece. So, um, just, you know, again, kind of covering the, uh, basics that can kind of pertain to, um, you know, any, any number of things with respect to time saving and such. And then I wanted to kind of go meal by meal just to, um, you know, separate things out a little bit and kind of get more into the weeds so to speak, get more uh, specific to each uh, each one of you know those meals. All right, so where do we start? Again, um, healthy eating is broad. Um, people in the field of nutrition are probably going to have different um, opinions about you know uh, healthy eating um, with with certain things, um, but. When you talk about healthy eating, you know, there, there are certain things that are that are pretty quick, clear that we know um, about research uh, that we know from research and, you know, that are that are kind of, you know, mainstays in nutrition. Um, one of those is is fruits and vegetables. So um, if it's not already apparent, I'm kind of loosely basing the, the healthy eating approach on uh, my plate. Um, my own personal opinion is not is my plate is not perfect, but it's it's I think it's great to kind of simplify things and um, really hammer home kind of the, you know, the, the big picture healthy nutrition things. Um, and again, to start, um, fruits and vegetables. Um, any good diet, any um, healthy eating plan is going to have plenty of fruits and vegetables. Um, with respect to the plate, you're looking at, you know, kind of half uh, your plate of uh, fruits and what we call non-starchy vegetables, which I'll kind of get into in, in a minute. Um, you can see that the vegetable, plate, vegetable piece is slightly larger than the fruits. Um, so when we're talking about that, we're talking, you know, when I'm saying uh, aim for five cups per day, we're talking about, you know, slightly smaller on the fruit end. So, you know, for most people, that's usually about two cups, um, three cups for larger individuals and such. Um, in terms of the, you know, modalities of these things, um, fresh, I think is best or frozen ideally, but, you know, if you want to do canned varieties, um, those are certainly fine too. Uh, I would always recommend finding those without salt or flavorings. Um, you can always rinse any canned vegetables, um, to get rid of a lot of the salt. You can, you know, the, I think the estimates are somewhere between 40 and 80%. If you rinse, you know, canned vegetables in a colander, you can get rid of a lot of that salt. So, um, you know, those, those are options as well. Um, fruit, if you buy anything that's prepackaged with respect to fruit, try to find things that's packed in its own juice rather than syrup. Um, the big thing with fruits and vegetables, I think, um, is to try to add as much variety as you can. And uh, I kind of added this little picture of the, the, the colors, uh, so to speak. And, you know, the colors represent a lot of different things, but, uh, but really it's just a, a variety with respect to certain nutrients and respect to these, uh, the healthy things uh, that we're getting from fruits and vegetables. Um, I won't go into the science and the details and such, but um, 
just keep that in mind with re respect to this, this topic is the, the variety. Uh, from there, we go into our grains portion. So uh, this is where some people can have differing opinions about, about uh, amount. And uh, I worry that overall my plate kind of, you know, pushes this a little too much in terms of the amount of servings. But um, in terms of a healthy balanced diet and, and sort of, you know, respect to this plate um, and your meals and such, uh, you know, a quarter of the plate, I think, is is perfectly uh, good and reasonable in terms of uh, grains. Um, what do we mean by grains? So ideally, we want to try to choose things that are whole grains. So, um, you know, if that means you're choosing whole grain products like breads and um, cereals and uh, those kinds of things, when you're reading that label, uh, look for that word whole. Um, a lot of grains are kind of whole, uh, sort of standard. In, in the US because you know the, the grains that we tend to process in the US are, are things like wheat, um, rice. Most other grains don't typically don't get processed that much. So if you're getting things like quinoa, uh, oats, farro, um, those kinds, they're, they're gonna be whole grain regardless because again, we, do, we just don't process um, things like wheat, rice, uh, barley was another one I should ask. Uh, should have added. Um, those grains tend to be processed so you can get uh, um, uh, non-whole varieties, if you will. So uh, the non-whole varieties of, you know, what we normally know as, you know, white or, uh, you know, enriched, if you're looking at food labels or food ingredient labels, um, you know, they're good. They're going to have less fiber. They're going to have less um, uh, healthy fats, less, less nutrients overall. Um, so again, best to pick the, uh, the whole grains uh, with respect to those. Uh, I mentioned in the last slide about non-starchy vegetables. The grains portion is, is where we would include the starchy vegetables. So you're basically looking at the four right there, potatoes, corn, peas, and winter squashes. So butternut squash, acorn squash, those, you know, those kind of starchy tasting uh, squashes, you know, not to be confused with like summer squash um, and such. Uh, legumes, beans, kind of a all encompassing food you know they're 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 kind of grain or you know carby and and there's protein in them too but um unless you're a vegetarian i usually tend to include this in the in the grain portion with respect to balance uh this balanced plate so um i've alluded to it already but when we look at your grains here and we add in your fruits and vegetables what we get is good things like fiber um Fiber is going to be, again, in those in those those three portions of the plate: the fruit, vegetables, and the grains. Um, fiber is good for plenty of things: heart health, uh, motility, motility, and has uh, healthy digestive function and such. Um, general recommendations are about 25 to 32 grams per day, um, which unfortunately most people don't need, but um, hence the recommendation for um, those fresh and, and minimally processed vegetables and, and whole grains. Bottom half is going to be that protein. Again, it's, it's about a quarter of your plate. Um, with respect to the protein, we're uh, ideally focusing on kind of fresh, minimally processed uh, meat, poultry, fish, um, eggs, uh, cheese. Again, beans, legumes have a uh, uh, protein content as well. I would focus definitely uh, more on those beans and legumes if you're a vegetarian or vegan, and um, you know you really need to. Um, you know, uh, keep tabs on your uh, uh, protein sources and such. Uh, nuts and seeds as well. In terms of kind of thinking about how much protein you're getting, you're getting, most proteins have somewhere between six to eight or seven grams on average per ounce. So if you, you know, you take like a, you know, a three or four ounce piece of protein you're getting in that, you know, 21 to 28 ish grams, um, you know, per serving. And that's, it's kind of what we're looking for when we say that quarter plate, um, somewhere between three to five ounces, the size of a deck of cards uh, and slightly larger. Dairy, also another controversial uh, area with respect to balanced nutrition. Um, I would just say that when we're looking at the sort of 
top like recommended healthy diets um, and the research surrounding those, most of the time it's going to be falling along the lines of the kind of Mediterranean or DASH style diets. Um, both of those include uh, no uh, fat free or low fat dairy in them. Um, so as long as you can tolerate dairy and uh, you know you don't have any um, specific diet like a you know vegan diet, then um, I would definitely include it in your diet. Um, about two to three servings daily. The serving is a, about a cup or so of uh, milk. Uh, yogurt, about an ounce of cheese. Um, if you don't want to do dairy, there's obviously plenty of non-dairy equivalents. So uh, the nutrient content is going to vary somewhat, uh, mostly with respect to carbohydrate content, fat. Um, the whole point of really of the of the dairy piece is really to focus on specific nutrients that are going to be in the the dairy products themselves or the uh, uh, plant or non-dairy based uh, substitutes, soy, rice, oat, coconut, almond, milks, um, uh, yogurts, and such. Um, they're all going to have, they're all going to be fortified with calcium. A lot of them are going to have vitamin D too. So um, those are, you know, those nutrients in particular are what we're looking at with respect to the uh, dairy, non-dairy alternatives uh, piece. So there's no uh, portion of the plate uh, with respect to fats, but um, they're sort of woven into uh, a lot of the other pieces. Um, but, you know, you can't talk about uh, healthy eating without talking about fats and um, ideally the best choices. Um, and those are going to be your unsaturated fats. So um, unsaturated fats are primarily going to be your uh, liquid oils, things that are uh, liquid at room temperature, olive oil, canola oil. Um, you're also going to get plenty of healthy fats and things like avocados, nuts, seeds, um, nut butters like peanut butter and almond butter and such. Um, one particular type of fat that I like to focus on and a lot of diets focus on are these omega-3 fatty acids, um, in part because the American diet tends to be filled with the, what we call omega-6 fatty acids. Um, and I'm not going to delve too deep into the science, but, um, a lot of the concern I think, I think seems to be the, the uh, imbalance of these two omega-3 versus omega-6 fatty acids. The American diet tends to uh, hold a lot more of the omega-6, less of the omega-3. Um, ideally, we want to try to kind of push that ratio up a little bit and try to you know, increase the uh, intake of the omega-3s. Uh, omega-3s are going to be in plant-based uh, things like flax seeds, chia seeds, walnuts primarily. Um, you can also get flaxseed oil too. Um, I, I think, you know, you can kind of take it as a supplement or, um, whatnot, but, um, I think these plant-based varieties are, are going to be your best choices. Um, animal-based sources are primarily going to be fatty fish. Um, there's a little bit of omega-3 in pretty much all fish is, as far as I know. The highest variety, again, is going to be in those fatty, fatty cold water fish, things like salmon, tuna. Uh, if you're really adventurous and you want to try things like sardines, anchovies, um, and make like, or kippers or something like that, you're going to get plenty of omega-3s in those. Um, but again, if you're not privy to any of those and you're not really interested, uh, any kind of fish is a great protein source and you, you're going to get some omega-3s with um, any kind of fish. Beverages. Um, I think beverages, it's best to keep it simple. Water, coffee, tea. Um, a lot of, you know, what makes things like coffee and tea, quote unquote, healthy is, is the amount of sugar and or cream you're putting in them. So um, we'll, I'll touch on that in a little bit, but um, you know, that, that's something to keep in mind with respect to those beverages. Otherwise, you know, there's, there's actually a lot of good research on coffee and tea in moderation with respect to, you know, a number of different, um, kind of healthy biomarkers and such. Um, I always try to encourage people to, uh, drink calorie free beverages. Uh, and I, I'm not really talking about dairy per se, but, um, more so like, uh, you know, kind of focusing on, uh, if you want to get a little bit of flavor with something that you're drinking, um, rather than choosing like juice or soda or something like that, 
Um, you know, there's tons of, of these calorie free um, or really low calorie beverages on there that can give you a little bit of flavor if, you know, if you don't like drinking water. Um, there's uh, seltzers out there. These are becoming really popular. The, the uh, when I say seltzer, I mean the, you know, sugar free um, seltzers that are carbonated and have a little bit of that fruit flavor in them. A lot of people like them um, as is. If you want a little bit more, you know, a splash of fruit juice isn't a terrible idea. Um, these are a couple of a uh, couple of my personal favorites. I really like the uh, True Brand um, uh, products they sell. They're 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 like little uh, powder packets that you can pour on water. Uh, the Stir Brand for drops. These are uh, two of my personal. You know, these are one of my personal favorites with respect to those drops. Um, stevia sweetened. Lots of good research on stevia. I think if you're afraid of artificial sweeteners, which I don't think you should be, um, but uh, you know, these are two of my personal favorites. Um, in terms of those disclosures, none of these companies, uh, <laughs> no, no companies and no, uh, you know, any products that I might mention, none of these people are paying me. Um, you know, a lot of this is just coming in from my own personal experience, personal expertise, what I know about nutrition and, and, you know, what, um, seems to fit kind of within, um, you know, my research and my studies and such. So. Um, I wanted to put a brief thing in here about alcohol, and I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but uh, just something to keep in mind, I guess. Uh, with respect to uh, moderation with alcohol, it's one drink per day for women, two drinks per day for men. Um, and I think I'm going to leave it at that. So, uh, Speaking of moderation, so here's what we talk about, um, you know, uh, limits, some, you know, um, it's always funny when people talk about moderation as if it's this sort of, uh, you know, simple kind of, you know, cut and dried thing, but it, it's really not. And this is where things can, I, I think, can get a little bit messy with respect to, you know, a, a healthy diet and nutrition is um, with all the research we have, we really don't have a lot of uh, clear cut recommendations, you know, save maybe a few with respect to moderation. Um, I would never... Um, uh, you know, I would never advise or even recommend, you know, anybody really limit certain things from your diet. Um, you know, food is, food is a beautiful thing. And there are a lot of things that, you know, we may eat that may be quote unquote unhealthy that can bring joy or, you know, that have cultural significance or, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't think any diet should exclude those things, but, um, you know, it's just a couple of, you know, just something to keep in mind, I guess, with respect to moderation. And I think, you know, um, I don't think it's a bad idea to kind of set some healthy limits for yourself. Uh, and I will leave it at that. But respect to the, with respect to this moderation, um, the things that come to mind for me um, are going to be sugars and, and, and these sugar sweetened beverages. Um, if there's one thing I would really like to see people really try to avoid as much as they really, really can, um, it, it's going to be soda and sugar sweetened beverages. Um, I'm sure most people know they don't really provide a lot of uh, nutrients. Um, you're getting hydration, which is great. Um, you're also getting a lot of sugar and uh, a lot of other things. And depending if you're drinking diet soda, you know, you can get a lot of sodium, you can get some phosphoric acid, um, which can sometimes cause issues. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my piece about that. Um, with respect to the sugar and the sugar sweetened beverages things, um, when we're talking about reading ingredients labels, you're looking for things like syrup. Um, any kind of syrup, rice syrup, um, you know, cane syrup, there's all kinds of, you know, words for sugar, but, uh, that's usually a good indication that there's some in there. So, um, you know, keep an eye out for that. Um, anything, any with oats, dextrose, glucose, fructose, all those are going to be, um, sugars or added sugars, I should say. Um, juice is another one. I don't think juice is terrible in moderation, but, um, Again, with respect to that piece on fiber that I talked about, you're going to get a lot more fiber from um, whole variety fruits, um, you know, rather than the juices. And, you know, if you drink an orange juice, it's basically the equivalent of eating three oranges. And most people aren't going to sit and eat three oranges in a sitting. So, you know, something to think about. Um, the other thing is respect to those fats. So with fats, I was mentioning um, 
you know, trying to stick with uh, the unsaturated fats, the liquid room temperature fats. So this is where limiting the solid room temperature fats is going to be helpful. And those solid room temperature ones are going to be um, things like, you know, fatty meats where you get that white marbling, uh, butter, um, cream's liquid, but, you know, it's only because they homogenize it and they're separating it from milk. So it's, eh, you know, <laughs> kind of contradicting myself a little bit in that respect, but, um, you know, these are going to be these, those saturated as opposed to unsaturated fats. Uh, whole milk whole, uh, and milk products, thing, uh, ice cream, half and half. Um, and these tropical oils. So a bit of controversy over these two with respect to coconut oil. Um, you know, um, again, I don't think there's any reason why you can't use these things. It's just, you know, I try, I try to get people to focus on, you know, not making them their principal source of fat. So, and making something like, you know, a uh, good olive oil, kernel oil, or, uh, you know, that as a principal source of fat rather than these guys. Um, hydrogenated fats as well. These are kind of being phased out a bit. So the, uh, the FDA is setting um, some guidelines and are giving food manufacturers a time to basically eliminate these from um, food products because there's, you know, there's plenty of good evidence on there that they're, that they're not healthy at all. And the only kind of advantage they have are for things for like uh, shelf stability and such. And, um, you know, they, they're, they're not great for your heart health at all. So um, more companies are think are, are getting rid of these and, and substituting some of these tropical oils like the palm, palm kernel oil. So, um, you know, not, not nearly as bad as hydrogenated oils, but uh, still something to, you know, kind of uh, have in moderation. We talked about refined grains, the white ones. Again, looking at the labels, you're looking for the words like enriched, unbleached, or wheat without whole before it. Um, you know, more so if you're looking at like bread, crackers, um, those kinds of things. Uh, high sodium foods as well. And high sodium usually, you know, is about 300 milligrams or more per serving. Um, salt can definitely cause issues with some people. Um, some people aren't salt sensitive. Um, either way, I don't think it's a bad idea to kind of, you know, keep tabs on that. Um, not so much with the salt shaker per se, but you're, you're going to get more salt in your diet from things like processed food, processed meats. Uh, you know, and I put that term processed in quotes just because it tends to <laughs> be kind of loaded. But, um, you know, whenever you're buying something that's packaged and prepared uh, from a restaurant or something like that, I, I think that's kind of what we mean with respect to process. And, you know, it's never a bad idea to look at labels and, and try to get an idea of how much salt is in there. Uh, as Jay says, uh, intuitive eating is one, is something that I'm very interested in. Um, I've read plenty of books on this and it's, um, it's, uh, something that I feel will be very useful with respect to nutrition and helping people, um, eat, especially people with, uh, patients with eating disorders. Um, there's a lot of good data on it. Um, again, there's been books, you know, written on this subject. What does it mean in a nutshell, as, as, as easy as I can simplify it? Eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full. Uh, listen to your body, I guess, is, is kind of some of the big picture things. If you like visuals, this is the way I like to think about it. So if you're thinking about how hungry you are or, or how full you are, um, on either end of the extreme, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1, you're dizzy, nauseous, shaky, and you've waited way too long to eat. 10 is your, it's Thanksgiving and you've had seconds and thirds and maybe dessert and you are, you know, sitting in a pile on the couch maybe because um, you just eaten so much to the point where your body just doesn't know what to do with itself. Uh, ideally, you want to try to stick in that three to seven range. So um, three, your stomach's growling, it's a, it's a good indication that you should eat. Um, eat to the point where you're full, satisfied you know, maybe a little slightly uncomfortable in terms of fullness. Um, ideally, you don't want to go beyond that. Uh, I've worked with quite a few people who actually have difficulty with this too. And, and some people have a really hard time trying to determine how hungry they are and how uh, full they are. Um, I would encourage you to try to kind of like listen to your body and, and sort of get in touch with this a little bit. Um, if you want kind of like a basic, you know, uh, I don't want to say rule, but just something to think about, I guess, with respect to how often you should eat and, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, being hungry and such, 
try to have something to eat roughly every five hours. Um, and I don't mean a meal, I, I mean anything, a snack, um, something small. Um, try not to let your go, try not to let yourself go, you know, more than five hours if you can. Another thing I wanted to focus on, or uh, just touch on at least, um, is, is what, what I like to call halt B. So you can see the pictures there and maybe you can see um, what I'm alluding to a little bit. Um, but just something else to keep in mind with respect to this intuitive eating approach is um, thinking about, are you hungry? Or are you angry, angry, angry anxious, lonely, tired, poor? Um, I think, um, there's a lot here. And again, there's been books written on the subject. Um, all I really wanted you to do, I think, was just kind of, you know, think about this and kind of turn inward and, and, and sort of try to get in touch with what your body's telling you about your hungry and not your brain, so to speak, if it makes sense. So, um, again, books written on the subject, if you want to get more into it, um, by all means. Um, I think it's a very interesting topic. Okay, great. So now you all know how to eat healthy, right? But now you're super busy. So what do you do? Okay, so let's take a look at, at some and some big picture ideas here. So um, again, I, this is where I wanted to start um, and kind of you know from the from the forest, so to speak, and then we can kind of get into the trees a little bit. Um, you need to have a plan. You're going to make your life a lot easier if you have a plan in in, in any respect. Um, and I'll get, and again, we'll get into the trees, into the details, if you will, of, of kind of, you know, uh, planning for certain things. So, um, you know, that means um, trying to have an idea of what your meals are going to be as much as you can, um, making a grocery list when you go shopping. Uh, if you're really super busy and, and you know, if you, you need to kind of outsource this to somebody else, you know, you have things like Instacart, and Peapod, and uh, Amazon Shopping where you can, uh, you know, pick out what you want on your uh, using a cell phone app or on the internet and have people deliver food to your house. Um, you know, there, there's an option here for this. Uh, one thing I should say is that when I'm, when I'm talking about all these things, what I really tried to do with this was to try to give, uh, you know, tidbits of, of a number or a, a little bit of information about a lot of things, I guess, and to give you idea, ideas of, uh, of a lot of different things you can try. So I don't necessarily go into um, a huge amount of detail in each one of these, but um, at least just to give you an idea of, you know, it's something to think about. And, um, you know, rather than trying to kind of show you things that you could search on the internet for yourself and find tons of information on, I just wanted to kind of make you aware of them and, and kind of give you some basics and, um, you know, give you my experience of some of these things. So, um, if you're a person that uh, likes paper, you can certainly use a, a pad to do this. There are apps to do this to kind of keep your life organized. Um, I would certainly recommend them with respect to trying to keep a well-stocked pantry. So um, have things on hand. Um, there are certain things that you're going to want to have in your pantry, reg pantry regardless. Um, again, if you buy any good cookbook or go on the internet, you can find plenty of information about, you know, what constitutes a well, a well stocked pantry. And, um, you know, this is something that kind of, I think comes with practice over time that you get used to, you know, what you need and, um, with what you like to cook and such. So, um, again, if you don't like paper, there's plenty of apps that you can use to create grocery lists, um, to keep your pantry stocked and make your life easier. Um, this is a picture of one that I've used before called uh, Bring, which has little pictures and you can kind of keep your running grocery list and um, check it off as you go and then um, add it as you need to go shopping. Um, they have pads that you can buy that you can put on your fridge and if you run out of things in your pantry, you can kind of check it and know that, okay, I need to pick this up when I go grocery shopping. So that'll kind of make your life a little easier with respect to this, uh, you know, keeping in, uh, your pantry stocked and having things on hand that you need. Um, having pre-portioned snacks on hand. You can buy things that are already pre-portioned. You can um, buy them in bulk and portion them out yourself. Um, going back to that intuitive eating piece and that sort of uh, scale of one to 10 and, you know, uh, and trying not to wait too long before you get really hungry. Um, that's where a, a lot, you know, if you start to get into the one, two range of, of the hunger and fullness scale, uh, that's where people can, I think, tend to kind of make unhealthy choices is when they're really, really hungry and they're not well prepared. Um, if At least if you have some pre-portioned snacks on hand that are balanced, and I'll get into that. Um, 
you know, you can have something like that or, you know, at, at work, if you bring some pre-portioned snacks, um, you know, and keep them at work, you know, maybe you'll be less likely to grab something from a vending machine or, or, or something else, you know, again, if you, you know, trying to maintain that healthy diet. Uh, get yourself a water bottle. Uh, bring it to work, have water on hand. When you go out to run errands, fill up your water bottle, bring it with you. Um, keep hydrated. Hydration is good. Um, it's something I, I recommend everybody to do. Just get a water bottle and, and bring it with you wherever you go if you can. I like to tell people to try to have some go-to recipes. If you don't have, have some already, um, you know, it may take a little bit of time to develop these, but the idea is that you, you want to try to have at least a few recipes that you know that you can whip up and make without having to look at um, anything uh, like a recipe card or, or a, a, an app or a, something on the internet. Um, you know, if you, if, if, if things go awry and you don't really have much of a plan, you, you know, if you can, if you have a recipe that's tried and true and that you can make without really thinking about it and get it done real quick, um, it's good to have a few of those. Um, it's also great to try new things. So, you know, if you can try one re recipe a week, that's great. If not, you know, no worries, but, um, you know, it's a good way to add things into your repertoire and, um, create a little bit of variety. Um, and, you know, you know, work on your cooking skills and such. So. Um, cook once, eat twice or thrice as much as you can. Try to cook more than you're going to eat at that time. Um, this is going to make your life easier, I think, with um, respect to packing your lunch for the next day. Or if you would rather just, um, you know, rather than cooking a meal every night of the week, um, cook a meal and have it, you know, for dinner on Monday. And then if you want to have it for dinner again on Wednesday or Thursday, if, if you don't mind that, that's a, you know, that can make your life easier. Um, I, I don't really know too many people who like to come home and cook every single night of the week. Um, I like to cook and I don't like to do it myself. So um, try to always keep in mind when you're cooking to try to eat more than, you know, that one meal. Utilize your freezer. Um, this is going to make your life a lot easier because when you have time to, uh, you know, prep ingredients, um, you know, if you don't think you're going to be able to use them all, uh, utilize the freezer. So, you know, if you're, if you're chopping up things, um, like peppers, onions, uh, you know, potatoes, anything like that, um, you know, you can keep these things frozen, keep them on hand and you can, and you can throw them real quick, real quick into, into dishes and kind of make your life easier. And it, and it saves down, it saves on, uh, prep time as well. So, um, and the last thing I want to say is to is to try to have some options when plans fall through, uh, or what I like to call last resorts. Um, plans are going to fall through, things aren't going to go perfectly. Uh, time is going to kind of get away from you, and um, I never think it's a bad idea to have some options of of last resorts, so to speak. And, and I'll get into those. So let's talk about some specific meals. Uh, breakfast. Don't skip breakfast. Breakfast is good for you. Um, unless you're really, really not hungry in the morning, then I guess you could, but, um, try to have breakfast in the morning. It's, it, it, you know, it, it, it gets you going. It gives you energy. Um, I can go on and on, but I'm, I'm just going to go into it here. So, um, these are some kind of quick pre-prepared breakfasts that come to mind for me. Um, you know, again, this isn't an exhaustive list. You can go on the internet and get tons of things, but again, with, uh, from my experience and, you know, kind of just give you an idea of where to start. Um, this is where I have some, some options that I like to throw out there. So you have overnight oats. Um, again, oats are a good whole grain. Um, you throw some kind of liquid in there, even if it's, you know, you can put regular milk or uh, another kind of non-dairy milk, throw some fruit in there, um, put them in the fridge overnight, wake up in the morning, there's breakfast. You can um, make a large kind of bowl of them and, you know, kind of uh, every couple of days and just kind of scoop into them and and have them um, ready to go. Um, boiled eggs are quick. You can you can boil a ton of eggs at once and eat them throughout the week. Um, if you're more of a scrambled egg person, you can do those those mini egg frittatas that um, you can put in uh, muffin pans. Um, scramble some eggs up, throw some vegetables, maybe a little bit of cheese in there. Throw them in your in your muffin tin, cook them. You can throw them on a plate and put them in the microwave for 30 seconds and, and eat breakfast real quickly more. Uh, Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is a beautiful thing, and um, I could go on and on about Greek yogurt. Um, but it's it's a great protein source. You're getting um, a lot of nutrients in there. You're getting healthy probiotics. Um, throw in some chopped nuts, maybe a little bit of fruit. Um, there's breakfast. 
um, smoothies, and I'll, I'll touch on smoothies in a bit um, in my next slide. Um, whole wheat English muffin with nut butter, boom. There's, there's a quick and easy breakfast. You can even pair that with some of these other things. Um, if you need something that's a little bit more of a time saver, like you really got to get out the door and like, I need to eat like on the way to work. I don't even, I don't even have time to, to microwave something for 30 seconds. Um, you know, maybe not ideal, um, but you can, you know, have simple things like, you know, uh, a good balanced protein bar or a protein shake. Um, you know, again, there's tons of companies make these things and some of them are great and some of them are not so great. So I, exper I encourage you to experiment. Um, you know, again, I don't know if it's something I would do constantly all the time, um, but I think they're a good, um, you know, grab and go kind of thing. Um, these just crack and egg things uh, are another thing you can do. Uh, maybe if you're at work, if you have a microwave, if you have some eggs, you can crack an egg in there, stir it up real quick. Um, kind of a quick uh, egg muffin, if you will, if you, if you think about it that way. Last resort, um, you got to go to Dunkin', you got to go to Honeydew, you got to go to Starbucks. Um, do what you got to do. I, I encourage you not to do it often, but um, the beauty now with, with our government kind of keeping tabs on all this stuff is that you can um, get the nutrition facts for all kinds of things. Um, and I'm not going to go into a ton of detail here, but you know, you, you can kind of see here's Duncan, like, you know, some of these things are reasonable with respect to the content. You know, I don't really go too in, into calories too much, but you can kind of get an idea of like, you know, okay, some of these things aren't, aren't terrible uh, with respect to balance and, you know, uh, getting the nutrients that you need. Um, with any kind of like restaurant foods, um, you're going to look at the sodium and the sodium is going to be pretty high in most of them. So that's something to look out for. Again, uh, more so, you know, something you probably won't want to do terribly often. Here's my little smoothie matrix here. Um, I know Jay said this is going to be recorded and, on, and uh, put, put up online, but um, I thought, uh, you know, if I could share the uh, slides with you, you know, you can have access to this and um, have all the pictures and stuff so you can refer to them. But um, this is, you know, my, my little smoothie matrix here in terms of thinking about how to, how to do your smoothie. You can get tons of smoothie recipes online, but, um, you know, if you want something quick and you want to kind of experiment, um, think about it like this. Have a source of fluid, whether it's milk, water, uh, non-dairy milk, have a little bit of fruit, maybe a cup, a banana, or, you know, maybe a few berries, something like that, and then throw a protein source in there. Um, you can get all kinds of varieties and uh, tastes and flavors and such with, uh, you know, Greek yogurt, peanut butter. You can even do silken tofu. Um, don't knock it till you try it. Um, protein powders. Uh, this last thing on the end here is called kefir. It's sort of like a, it's a, it's a, it's a probiotic uh, beverage, kind of like, a, sort of like liquid yogurt, I guess. It makes sense. All right, I said we were going to talk about snacks. So let's talk about snacks. Uh, snacks are what we like to call small meals, not to be confused with treats, i.e., apple and peanut butter. You got a pretty good balanced snack there. Reese's snack cake. It says snack in it, but I, I don't really think it's a snack. It's I, I would call that a treat. Uh, this is something we do with kids to kind of simplify this thing. You know, the idea of a snack versus a treat. So. Um, Balanced snack to kind of simplify things. Think about it as keep as having some source of carbohydrate with a, a source of protein and or fat. Um, anywhere from one to three times a day, I guess. Um, you know, everyone's a little different, and uh, I don't want to get too much into individual needs, but uh, you know, it's a it's a good number I think to think about. And uh, again, with with timing, you know, and talking about that five hours kind of you know uh, between eating occasions. Um, you know, snacks can help you stave off some of that hunger and, um, you know, um, provide good nutrition as well. So, uh, I like these kinds of sort of mix and match ideas. And, uh, again, uh, in terms of the carbohydrate plus protein and or, uh, fat, um, this is a way to kind of give you a variety and maybe um, help you experiment with a couple of things. So, um, you get some healthy whole grain fruit. Um, healthy carbohydrate sources on the left here. Um, on the right, you have some protein and healthy fat sources. Um, mix and match as you see fit. Um, some of these are going to be more palatable than others, obviously. Um, but you can see you can get a lot of variety in there. You know, you can do some fruit or dried fruit and, uh, you know, a little bit of almonds or, or some nuts and, or, uh, you know, make a, make a trail mix out of it. 
Um, Greek yogurt in and of itself is a good protein and carb snack. You can make a small smoothie that's a good balanced carb and protein snack. Um, you know, some whole grain crackers with a little bit of like tuna maybe. Um, protein shaker or bar, like the ones I showed for breakfast, you know, if you're in a pinch, those, you know, those have, uh, a lot of them have a little bit of both, but um, those can be good in a pinch in a too. Uh, popcorn and a little bit of uh, cheese, like a string cheese or something. Popcorn is a whole grain too, just, uh, just something to keep in mind. Here's a couple of personal faves with respect to packaged stuff. If you want to try to grab something quick um, and don't really have a lot of time to kind of prepackage things out, um, you've got cottage cheese that's pre-portioned. So many things come in individual size portions now. You've got your baby bell cheeses, you've got popcorn in individual bags, you've got single servings of hummus and nuts. And, you know, you have uh, things like Lara bars uh, that are good dried fruit and nuts. Um, you know, you can go on the internet and find all kinds of recipes for uh, those kinds of things, like these little protein energy bars that have dried fruit and nuts. Um, cut up veggies or quick things like, ba like uh, baby carrots with um, some hummus or, you know, even like a, you know, a good a Greek yogurt based dip or something. Um, balance breaks, you get a little bit of cheese, a little bit of uh, nuts and uh, some dried fruit, you know, balanced. Roasted chickpeas or roasted edamame are great. Um, yeah, so just, just some things to, to kind of look at, some, some options to try. Uh, lunch and dinner, I kind of grouped together. I feel like I could, I could have done my presentation just on this because there's so much to cover. Again, I want to try to dip into a little bit of everything. Um, and I would encourage you to kind of do a little bit more research and explore further with the things that um, kind of resonate. With you. So um, lunch, dinner, depending on what kind of shift you're working, you know, when you're eating that meal, uh, pack the night before if you can. Um, get yourself a nice uh, lunch box and um, pack your lunch the night before, throw it in the fridge, grab it and go in the morning. Um, Again, leftovers, like I said, cook once, eat twice or thrice. Um, if you cook a meal and, um, you know, if you think you're gonna, if you think you're gonna one of those people that's gonna wanna use it for another dinner meal, I think you can kind of pack everything, you know, as you see fit and separate. Um, if you think you're gonna bring it for lunch the next day, pack your lunch right then and there. Put, put your leftover protein and some vegetables and maybe a little bit of grains, throw it in the container and um, pack it up and you're ready to go. There's your lunch for the next day. Um, salads and sandwiches are always tried and true. Um, sandwiches are quick to pack. Salads, if you buy all your salad ingredients, you can make your salads for the week. Um, or, you know, even if you're going to have it a couple, you know, a couple of times, you can um, buy all your salad ingredients, make your salads up, um, kind of throw everything together, keep them in the fridge, and then grab one on your way out the door to work and, and have it for lunch, you know, already prepared and ready to go. Some other ideas, um, sheet pan dinners, these are great. Throw your protein, throw some vegetables, um, maybe some potatoes or some sweet potatoes, chop them up, throw them on a sheet pan, throw them in the oven, cook them all together, um, dinner's ready to go. You can do the same thing with a pot or a pan. Um, you, you, can, you can scour the internet and get tons of recipes on, this, on these things. Um, you know, cooking all your meals in one pot or one pan or crock pot. Um, these can all make your life easier. And, um, you know, the good thing about these two is that I think they reheat pretty well. So, um, with respect to doing those leftovers, um, you know, it's going to be more palatable, I think, than, um, certain foods that may not heat, re reheat as well. Um, yeah, to make your life a little bit easier, um, if you feel like your cooking skills are, are, uh, Kind of amateur or uh you know you uh or if you want to save time you can buy pre-chopped pre-prepared produce you can buy uh frozen pre-packed vegetables and grains canned beans and vegetables again you know they're not they're, they're good things um rinse them off you can get rid of the salt um some of the things i like to kind of uh throw out there again um to make your life easier uh, you got those prepackaged, uh, produce sections, you know, uh, th this is where they get you. So, uh, again, these things are great time savers, but, um, like anything else, keep in mind, you're paying for labor. So, um, your fresh vegetables that you're getting from, from the farm or, or, you know, that are whole, um, they're going to take more time to prepare. They're probably going to taste better, I think, but if you really need a time saver and money's not an issue, um, grab some of these, um, you know, pre-cut things. 
Um, the little potato company makes these little baby potatoes you can throw in the microwave and, and cook real quick. Um, you have prepackaged grains that you can throw in the microwave and um, little cups that can save you a lot of time to kind of um, stick with some whole grains. Um, Healthy Choice makes uh, dishes uh, called Power Bowls, pretty low in salt, pretty, you know, quick in a pinch. Um, Bird's Eye make these, pro these protein blends that are kind of like a, a blend of like beans, vegetables um, that are pretty quick. Um, so yeah, just again, just some things to try because um, especially things like beans and grains, like brown rice in particular, they can take a while to cook. And if, uh, if you're in a pinch, um, these can kind of, uh, you know, hasten things for you. Uh, meal prep is, is again another thing that you can scour the internet for and get tons of uh, recipes on. Um, meal prep can be great, sort of again, kind of going along that cook once, eat twice, thrice, or even more kind of thing. Um, you're basically just cooking a lot of uh, of a, a particular ingredient and making meals out of it. Um, it's definitely cost effective, and you have control over what you're eating, so you're more likely going to get um, you know some healthy things if you're you know as opposed to eating out or uh, you know, grab and take out or something. Um, it tends to get repetitive and it can be time consuming initially while you're learning how to do it. Um, but yeah, like anything else, there's some pros and cons. And um, if you don't mind eating the same thing over and over again, at least for one of your meals, it can um, definitely make uh, a healthy uh, meal. And uh, again, it's, it's cost effective. So a couple of last minute uh, other ideas and some last resorts. Um, these home delivery meal services that are out there. Uh, I don't think these are a bad idea, especially if you don't really know a lot about cooking. They can make your life easier. Um, if you do some digging and some research, you can find some that uh, offer a lot of healthy dishes and you're gonna get all the nutrition information on these things too. So um, Blue Apron, HelloFresh, Home Chef, um, you know, if you're not much of a cook and you don't, um, you know, have many, you know, have much in terms of cooking skills, um, these can be a good place to start, even if you do it for a couple of months. Um, I would encourage you to do a little, a little research on these things if you're looking for the healthy options, because a lot of them, uh, they don't really have whole grains. Um, they tend to be heavy in the starches, which isn't bad, but it seems like they're doing it at the expense of the vegetables, uh, presumably because things like white rice and potatoes are going to be a little bit cheaper than the, than the fresh veggies. So um, Sun Basket is one in particular that I think does this well. They have, uh, they're, they're, they're pretty much veggie forward and, um, you know, they're, they have a lot of um, good options, but, uh, you know, you, you're going to pay more for this. You're, you're, you're gonna, you obviously you have to pay for this labor and it's going to make your life a little easier and maybe teach you some things, but um, you know, it's definitely gonna be more expensive than um, kind of learning and doing it on your own. Freshly is another company, um, they make prepackaged meals. Um, again, if you're super busy and you don't wanna, and you don't have time and don't wanna think about things, um, Freshly is actually not that bad. Their meals are pretty well balanced. You can definitely get a healthy uh, variety uh, of all kinds of foods. Um, again, it's gonna be expensive, but if money's not an issue, um, could be something to look into, but um, you know, it, it's not going to be for all your meals. Um, I, I suppose you could do that, but you're, you're going to be paying a really lot of money. And, uh, you know, uh, it's an option, but uh, again, it's not going to cover everything. Restaurants. Um, again, like I said, with breakfast, um, any restaurant that has greater than 20 locations, you can go on their website and, and look at the nutrition information. Um, what I should say, too, is that when I'm talking about restaurants here, I'm not talking about like, you know, going out for a birthday dinner, going out for a special occasion, or if you go out to dinner every so often, um, you know, go out for dinner and enjoy a good meal and, and have fun. Um, when I'm talking about this, I mean, I'm thinking more so with respect to I got to eat lunch. I didn't get a chance to pack. Um, I had a rough week. I didn't uh, prep any of my meals or anything like that. Um, I need to go out and get something real quick. Um, Take a look, you know, if it's chain restaurants in particular, take a look at some of these nutrition facts, take a look at things in advance. Um, and I don't think it's ever a bad idea to kind of look and try to find a restaurant that has healthy options um, and try to find a good go-to. So that way, if you're in a pinch and you know you need to rely on something from a restaurant like takeout, um, you know, have kind of like a tried and true dish that, okay, um, I, I need to go get takeout because I just don't have the time and I didn't have the time to do anything. Um, go, to your, go to your tried and true from you know, a place like um, Chipotle or, or a sandwich shop or something um, you know, that's 
that has a good balanced meal that's, you know, again, kind of based on the principles that we talked about, you know, at the start. Um, yeah. All right, I apologize. I went a little over time. Um, I wanted to try to have more some more room for questions. Um, but I'm going to turn it over to Jay now and, um, you know, I'll happy, be happy to answer um, any questions that we have. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome work, Greg. Thank you so much for all of this amazing information um, and very helpful and useful tips, um, especially towards the end. I really, I really enjoyed that. Of course. Um, so just, just to acknowledge the time, I know it's, um, I, we, we said that we're going to go until um, seven and we do have some, some questions. So um, if folks obviously need to um, do their thing and, and, and jump off, um, you know, I respect your time and thank you so much for, for, for joining us. If you do need to um, go, um, Greg, if, if you don't mind, I, I am going to ask um, some, some questions. And for those of you um, who, who need to go, but um, wanna re-listen to the recording, um, the recording of this questions will be available on our, on our website. So is, is, is that okay with, with you, Greg, if we go a little over time? Of course, yeah. Okay, I'm awesome. happy to provide the slides too, if you feel like it'll be helpful, but um, yeah. obviously the recording. You know. Yeah, um, we can for sure um, right. get your slides and, and make it into a PDF form and available um, on, on the website as well for anyone that's looking for, for those details. Um, okay, we have some really great questions and just um, a, few, a few comments. Um, so, the, so the first question is, and we can do this like rapid form, Greg. So you know you don't have to um, do sure. a whole lot of things. Okay. So, um, okay. Um, are there any supplements that you recommend? Um, and uh, including it was that is, um, what do you think of, of protein powders and what do you think of probiotics? So I think it depends on what you mean by supplements. So you, you're you're saying probiotics and protein. So I get that. Um, but I don't know if you mean like a meal replacement supplement, like a shake, or if you mean more like uh, over-the-counter multivitamin, multimineral uh, supplements. Um, I'll yeah. touch on the uh, protein powder and the and the probiotics. Um, with respect to the protein powder, um, I, I certainly think it has its place in kind of a general health approach. Again, if you're, you know, if you have certain goals or you know. Uh, you need extra protein for whatever reason, then again, I would encourage you to talk with a nutritionist, a dietitian, physician um, to kind of get more into the details. But, um, you know, I, I, I personally, I think protein powders are great for in addition to like a smoothie, just to kind of balance that smoothie out to get a little bit of protein, uh, you know, with your snack or meal. Um, I don't think they're absolutely necessary, but um, yeah, I don't think there's anything uh, wrong with them. And I think they're, they're good in, in certain, um, you know, modalities. Um, probiotics. Um, I, I prefer to see people get probiotics with, uh, from food. So, um, probiotics, prebiotics, I mean, you have things like yogurt and, and dairy foods, fermented foods, um, kefir, um, you know, you can get probiotics from things Our like, crap. you know, kimchi and, and, uh, and, um, uh, uh kombucha is another one. Um, you know, um, there's still a lot we don't know about probiotics. Um, and I think they have utility in specific instances for specific needs. But in terms of like the general population, um, I usually tell people to try to stick with foods as much as they can. Again, uh, 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 fermented dairy products, yogurt, kefir, those kinds of things. And some of those other uh, foods that I mentioned. Okay, great. Um, what is the difference between hydronated and partially hydronated oils? Uh, chemistry, really. With respect to how they affect the body, there's really not a whole lot of difference. Um, I'm not going to go into the science, but uh, right, right, right. a lot of it is just kind of how they process the oil and, and the chemical structure of it, so to speak. Um, the aim of these things is to create some to, to create a texture and uh, flavor that's uh, shelf stable. Um, that was the primary, um, you know, objective with these things. And uh, you know, they want they want to get the texture and the flavor and the mouth feel that you get from fat from something like butter. But butter doesn't really stay well on a shelf. Create these hydrogenated oils. You kind of you know that's kind of what you get. Um, these hydrogenated oils they they lower your good cholesterol and they raise your bad cholesterol. So there's kind of a double whammy with respect to heart health. So hence, you know, 
avoid as much as you can. And you, you're probably not going to even going to have to worry about it so much because again, they're they're going to be phased out of the food system within a few years. So. And and what do you think about the keto diet? <laughs> uh, how much time do you have? Um, keto, keto at its core is, is, uh, macronutrients, um, and a balance of these macronutrients, high fat, moderate protein, low carb. Um, I like to think of it, you know, it's the same way you're, you know, kind of looking at a vegetarian or a vegan diet, you know, you, if you structure, if you think about these diets with respect to how they're, um, formulated, Again, with keto, it's going to be the macronutrients, carbs, protein, fat, you know, vegan, vegetarian, specific to the foods you're eating. Um, you know, you could potentially keep yourself on a, on a reasonable keto diet if you're eating healthy fats um, and, uh, you know, healthy protein sources. And, you know, I'm a little iffy on the carbohydrates because um, you're not, you know, you're losing a lot of nutrients. But, um, you know, theoretically, you can make it work. You know, you can be on keto and eat nothing but you know, bacon and, and sausage and, um, you know, butter and all this other stuff. Um, just like you can be, you know, a vegan or a vegetarian, which is, you know, some people consider a good heart healthy diet, but, you know, Oreo cookies are vegan and, and bagels, you know, it's not ideal. Um, yeah. But like any other uh, diet, um, it's only as good as you're willing and able to stick to it. Um, so if you're doing keto for a reason for weight loss, um, in particular, which is what a lot of people use it for, um, keep in mind, it's only going to be as good as you're willing and able to stay on it. And if you don't think you can do it for the long term, um, it's probably not going to benefit you in the long term. If that's, you know, the goal that you're going for with, yeah. with that kind of diet. Got it. Um, so next question, I'm going to sort of summarize a little bit of this and add my own flair. Um, so when you, you talked about intuitive eating and sort of, you know, eating until you're, you're, you're full, um, can, can you talk a little bit about, you know, breaking sort of bad habits and in particular overeating like cereals for, for breakfast with foods that are designed to have you consume as much as you possibly can? Okay. Oh boy, this is a deep one. Um... My own personal opinion, I, I'm not a huge fan of cereal for breakfast in and of itself. Um, I think the biggest problem with breakfast in America is, is the sort of imbalance between the amount of protein that most people have and carbohydrates. Um, most breakfast foods or most breakfast meals um, in our society with the, with the quote unquote American diet tend to be very high carb and, and less protein, unless you're doing like breakfast meats or eggs. Um, you got your cereals, you got your French toast and your pancakes. Um, you know, those are, those are, uh, you know, kind of some staples, I think. Um, if people are going to do cereal, I would much rather see them get a good protein source. Like, you know, instead of having cereal with milk, um, have some Greek yogurt and pour some cereal on top of that. Um, Greek yogurt's got protein in it. It's going to keep you fuller. Um, cereal is basically just flour that's formulated into, you know, and extruded into these shapes. And then you're pouring liquid milk in it, which again, isn't bad in of itself, but you know, flour, powder and liquid, it's not going to keep you full. Um, and even if you eat a bowl in the morning and it keeps you full, it's not going to keep you full for long, which is why I would encourage people to try to get something, um, that at least has some more protein. Um, and you know, sprinkling a little bit of cereal on, on, on top of uh, your, your, your Ricky yogurt, say, or rather than doing cereal, you know, doing some overnight oats that are going to have uh, more soluble fiber. They're going to be more hearty, um, you know, and, and sort of stick to you a little bit more, I guess, with respect to the, the hunger piece. Yeah. That's a it's just good suggestion. Um, and then the, uh, we had a few statements, one about um, freezing butternut squash as a way to preserve food. We had one that endorsed uh, Cook Unity. Um, we had a thank you to you. And then the last uh, question was, do you have any recommendations for a site that can provide healthy meal plans that include breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, um, particularly in building out like meal plans according to like a Mediterranean diet? So I think the person is just looking for more structure and ideas. And if, you know, a, a single site has 
these types of resources. So kind of like a, uh, a one-stop shop, so to speak. Yeah, I guess. Like, yeah. Um, God, there's so many of these uh, websites. Like you could you could scour the internet. Um, I'm a big fan of. Um, I hate the name, but I love her website, uh, Skinny Taste. I don't. I don't really. I, I get a little eh with the word skinny. Um, you're, you might have to pay for some of these things, but um, Skinny Taste, um, uh, the, the woman who does her name is Gina uh, Hamalka. She has uh, tons of recipes, meal plans. Um, she does cookbooks. Um, she has kind of like a coding system for her recipes. So if you're, you know, if you're following a specific diet like keto, or if you want um, vegetarian or uh, gluten-free, or um, if you're looking for like a, a specific cooking modality, like a slow cooker one or a, or a air fryer, you can go on there and get specifics to those recipes. And um, uh, again, you can get meal plans. Um, What's, what, it's, 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 it's skinny taste, is that what you said? Called skinny taste, like skinny, like thin, skinny taste. Got it, all right, I just, um, I put it in the chat, you know, so when we look at this and, 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 um, and, and reference it, if folks wanna, you know, do anything deeper, for sure, we can, Look it up. Um, all right, uh, skinny skinny taste. Got it. All right. So skinny, um, skinny taste. Thank you, Greg, um, for all of this phenomenal information. You you are a, a wealth of knowledge. Um, thank you so much for, for for bringing all of this to our community um, and sharing you know some some really great um, information with us. Um, so of course, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for coming too. Great, great. And once again, everyone, this is going to be um, on, on our website um, and on, on YouTube. So in case you want to re-listen to any of this awesome information, you can find it there. And I believe um, Greg also generously offered to give us the, the slides. So we'll create a, a PDF link for us to also revisit that. So thank you. Okay, yeah, of course. So, so well done, everyone. Thank you so much um, for hanging with us towards the very, towards the very tippy top end here uh, and have a good rest of your evening. Bye-bye.